Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Klein and I'll be your presenter for the next 20 minutes. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, different fields and customizing them in the membership module. So the outline that I'm using today is from one of our workbooks. It's from our membership 102 workbook and then specifically pages two through seven. So if you have the workbook and you want to follow along, feel free to do so. If you don't have the workbooks and are interested in purchasing them, you can do so out on our website. So if you go to churchwindows.com, up at the top under beginning, you can go to training and resources. Oh, come on. And then training workbooks. And then here are all the different workbooks that we have available. They're $12 if you want to download them, print them off yourself, or they're $22 if you want us to mail you a pre-printed binder ready format. Um, again, this is optional. Like always, I'm recording the webinar, so if you want to rewatch it at a later date, you can. At any time, if you go up to supporting and go to our support center, all the past webinars that we've done have been recorded and they're uploaded here um, in the order they were done. So most recent are going to be up at the top. You can also use the search bar here or look by different categories if you would like. Um, but again, I'll have this cleaned up and I will add it to the website here by the end of the day today. So rewatch it, share it with someone you think might find this information beneficial. Um, I am the only tech in here today, so if you have a question, uh, feel free to type it into the question section on your GoToWebinar toolbar. I won't even be looking at those until after I'm done presenting the topic. Um, I find that if I try to read a question while still teaching, I get myself all mixed up, so I don't even look at them until after the webinar. But if you have a question, type it in, I'll get to it, or feel free to wait, I might cover it. Um, and if I don't, then you can type that question in at the end while we do a little Q&A session. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about customizing in the different fields that you have available for you in the membership module. Let me go ahead and get this open and I want to show you the different types of fields we have. So I'm going to go into people. So you actually have seven different types of fields that you can utilize and customize within church windows. You have a yes, no field, a character field, date field, email, list, numeric, and phone. Okay, so I want to take a time to, to go over each one of those and what they can be used for. So when we talk about customizing fields and the different types of fields, I'm going to kind of stay over here in this individual field section. Because this is where you can really go in and customize your church windows to be able to track the different type of information your church or your organization needs to know, okay, for your different people. So first field I want to talk about is a yes, no field. This is simply a checkbox field. So there are a couple of them here in our default sample data that I have. The first one that comes to mind is this include on directory field here. It has a simple checkbox. If it's checked, that means yes. If it's not checked, that means no. Pretty basic, okay? So again, you can create new fields, which I'll show you in a minute specifically how to do that by going in here, and you can create different topics. So if you need to track something that's either a yes or a no, you can again create this little checkbox field. Next, you have a character field. This is simply an open text box field that you can type in whatever information you see fit. Okay, so um, character field would be any type of words, numbers, or characters into that field with a maximum of 50 spaces long. Okay, again, it appears as a blank field, kind of like a text box. You have the freedom to then type in whatever you want to track for that. Okay. You also have a date field. This is going to be eight digits long, like a birth date field. 
you simply type in the date that you're wanting to track, or you can use the little calendar. As long as it's set up as a date field, you'll have the little calendar where you can then pick from the Dropbox the date you're wanting to track. Email field, there's one here. Email field is specific anytime you're wanting to track email addresses. Technically, you could use a character field because that would allow you to type in whatever you want, but I would strongly, strongly suggest if you are tracking an email address to make sure that field is set up specific to emails. You can also have more than one email address field. So as you see here on the screen, we have an email address field and other email. You could have a work email. You can set it up however you like, okay? Next is a list field. This is probably the most commonly used field because when you set up a list field, you set up specific codes that are going to be the norm or the standard for every list field on everyone's record, okay? So for example, status code, is a really common list field that people use because each code then is set up within here for the field you're wanting to track. So for example, status code, you're gonna have all of these different codes available which you've created and then people are gonna be able to pick only from that list. So this is a really great way to standardize, standardize kind of across the board for tracking something for everybody within your database, okay? Next is numeric. This is strictly used for numbers, okay? Not phone numbers, just numbers. So for example, you might have a member book roll number, or as people uh, join your church, they may be assigned a specific member ID. Um, that would be the option where you would want to use the numeric code or the numeric option for tracking that for people, okay? Last option is phone. It's automatically 10 characters long with the slashes and the dashes. And this is where you want to track cell phone. So whether it's work phone, email, or I'm sorry, work phone, cell phone, alternate phone, whatever it might be, you want to use a phone field as long as you are tracking a phone number. Okay. Now let's go, I'm going to go a little out of order in the book because I personally I don't like the order that they set it up in. So I'm going to jump to page three if you're following along and I'm going to go right in here to customize fields. Customize fields is where you are going to keep track of all of these fields you have here, okay? So as you go into each person's record, right now we're on Nina, as you click through the different people in your database, we go back here to Jen, you can see they have the same fields specific to members, but each person's information is going to be unique to that record. Even though the fields are the same, the actual codes you're putting in them are unique to this specific person. All right, so let's hit this customize fields button. This is where you manage all of this information. So after I hit customize fields, you can see that currently our category is on member, and you can see all of the fields we see in people are now listed here. So here's our field name, here's if it's visible, so whether we see it or not when we're looking at members, and then here's that type column. So this is what we were just talking about, those seven different types. This is where you specify what type you want that field to have. Okay, here's your size, and then here's a required checkbox. So you actually have the option, if whenever you go to someone's record, you have a field that really, really, really needs to be filled in, that's crucial for tracking your data, you can check this required box, and that means you have to have this field filled in on each person in your database. Okay, you also have your delete column here. So if you find you have some fields that you just don't want to track anymore and you're content deleting all of the information, you can hit the little minus sign and you will be prompted if you're sure you want to delete it. All right now, if I hit the minus sign here on my baptism date line, it is going to completely remove the baptism date field from my customized fields here, okay? So the minus sign here in customized fields completely removes that field from everything completely from your database, 
okay? So use the delete with caution. Um, if you decide you have a field that you don't really want to track anymore, but you might want to keep the information for down the road, you can always uncheck this visible box here. And that's going to allow you to keep the information. It's still in the database. It's just not going to show up here on this screen. So unchecking the visible column is going to be a lot safer option than hitting the delete. Because if you delete it, it is gone. You cannot get it back. Okay? Which you might want to do. But again, use it with caution. All right, let's talk about adding another field. So of all of these different fields that we have here, let's say we need to create, we need to create a new one, okay? To do that, I'm going to hit Add. You're going to type in the name of the um, field you're wanting to add. We can call it like new member class. Again, this can be whatever you want. This is just what popped into my head. Let's say, under type, here are those seven different options that we talked about. I'm going to make this a yes-no field, therefore it's only a size of one, and I'm going to say OK. Here it is, new member class. Since I did a yes-no field, it's just a check mark, OK? I just want to know if they took a new member class or not. Now, let's say I don't really want it down here at the bottom. I want to move it up higher in the list. If that's the case, go back into Customize Fields, scroll down to where it is, New Member Class, and then simply click on the field, and then you use these big chunky up and down arrows, and then you can jump it up higher in the list. So the order of these fields is completely customizable and up to you, okay? So the fields you're going to use the most often, you're probably going to want to keep those up at the higher part or up towards the top of the list. So let's go back to my new member class, and I'm going to put it up here next to how came to membership. If that's the case, I'm going to say OK. It's going to resort my list here, how came to membership, and then new member class right here. OK. Now, once you create your list fields, OK, those are the fields like status code that have all these different options for you to choose from. After you set that up, say you've made a new one, you need to then come in here with this little pencil, and this is where you are going to maintain the different codes for the specific list field that you're working with, okay? So here we go, maintain status codes. Here are all the different ones that have currently been set up. If you want to make a new one, you simply add in a new code. description, you would then type in the description. So we could, I don't know, visitor, potential, non-member, spouse, there's a lot of good options in here already. But then you would put your description in for whatever it would be, hit add, and then it would then pop down to the list below, okay? You have an inactive checkbox. If you find you have a status code that no longer pertains, no longer is of use to you and what you want to track, you can simply make it inactive or you can delete it. If you hit the minus sign, it is going to completely remove that potential code or whatever code it might be. So anybody who has a potential status code, if we hit delete, it's going to be gone. Okay, so keep that in mind with those minus signs because it is permanent. There's no undo for that. All right, so that's how you set up and maintain your different status code. So any field with a pencil over here on the right, this is going to be list fields that you can then go in and edit the different codes, or maintain them, okay? Now, we talked about hiding a field that's on page six. Again, if you find you have a field you no longer want to use, you can uncheck the visible box. Um, you also have the minus sign here as well. That's going to allow you to completely delete the field. Some fields are going to be grayed out. If the minus sign is not lit up in red, you cannot get rid of it. It's a crucial field for the software, and it's not going to let you get rid of it, okay? And we also talked about arranging the fields as well. So again, highlight the field and then use the down arrow, the up arrow to resort this list to the order that you need. Okay. 
a lot of customizing here. You really can't break anything. So come in here, go into your customize fields option, set up those specific fields that you need to track for your church and your organization to get those reports that you're needing, okay? One more thing I want to talk about, and then we'll wrap up, it has to do with special list fields. That's going to be your zip code, your country, and your city and state. Okay, so let's talk about over here on the left under address. If I hit this little pencil here, it's going to then open up my address information for this specific person. Okay, if we look down at the bottom, you'll notice for zip code, there's the history of the different zip codes that you've used in the software. Same with country, same with city, same with state. Okay, you have the option to customize these. So if you find that you type in a zip code that's wrong, that you don't need to track anymore, or a city that you don't need to keep maintaining for, you can come over here and hit the little dot, dot, dot. And this is gonna allow you to edit a code, okay? So again, you can add new ones if you have zip codes that are going to be tracked for different people, but then you also have the option to delete one. So if you don't care to keep track of this city, you can hit the minus sign and the program isn't automatically going to have that stored in the database anymore. Again, this is kind of an extra, a special thing you can keep track of, um, but you have the ability to come in here and do so. Again, Gehanna, this is where we are, so I don't want to delete that one, but let's say we want to get rid of this. If you hit the minus sign, you do have some different options. You have the option to delete the city from this list only, from this list and anywhere in membership and donations that addresses use it, or you can replace it. Say you spelled it wrong. There should be two S's, for example. You can go in here and adjust the value, add the second S, and then it's going to update that for all of the different cities or people that have this city as the option. Okay? And then there's this cancel, delete. If you clicked it on accident, you can get out of there. Okay? So that is how you handle those special list fields. All right, everyone, that's everything I wanted to go over with you for today. Lots of customizing options in here in people, um, allowing you to really track the information that you need to pull out of the software. So again, good data in is gonna give you good data out, good reports.